So the Democratic Party establishment did everything in their power to shove Joe Biden down our throats. And now that he will likely become the Democratic Party's nominee, they're realizing, oh, wait, I forgot that he's such a terrible candidate that he's probably going to lose to Donald Trump. Now, I think that there's a good portion of the Democratic Party, elected Democratic Party people, who don't actually care if the Democratic Party nominee loses to Donald Trump because Trump is someone who can unite Democrats, they can fundraise off of him, so it's not really the worst case scenario for them if they can sit on their ass for four more years and fearmonger about Donald Trump and not actually resist him. But there are people who I think actually do want to beat Donald Trump. I think that most Democrats probably want to beat Donald Trump. But now that he is likely to be the nominee, you know, everything is just laid out in front of them. His flaws, they realize he's not a good candidate. And part of the problem is that he can't attract young people. And this is something that was obvious. Nonetheless, now they're grappling with it. And uh, they're realizing he's got a really tough, you know, job ahead of him that convincing people to come out and vote for him. So as Sahil Kapoor of NBC News explains, voters under 45 continued to support Bernie Sanders by huge margins in Florida, Illinois, and Arizona, even as other groups came around to Biden. The gap has been largest with voters in their 20s or teens, mirroring a problem that hurt Hillary Clinton in key states in 2016, a lack of excitement among the young. I'm deeply concerned about the impact that a lack of enthusiasm from young voters could have in a general election, said Neil Shroka, a spokesman for Democracy for America, a progressive advocacy group that backs Sanders. The consistent concern has been that nominating Vice President Biden would be essentially a repeat of the 2016 election. Failing to excite young voters in the primary has been a significant red flag for Democrats in recent decades, Shroka said. Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, who were backed by young people, went on to win the election while Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, and Al Gore lacked that enthusiasm and ended up losing. Voters under 30 made up 19% of the electorate in 2016 and in 2012, but Hillary Clinton's margin of victory with this group was five points lower than Obama's, according to exit polls. The numbers were devastating in swing states that decided the election. In 2012, Wisconsin voters under 30 backed Obama by 23 points. In 2016, that group dipped as a share of the electorate and Clinton won them by a mere three points. In 2012, Pennsylvania voters under 30 supported Obama by 28 points. In 2016, they favored Clinton by 9 points. The Biden campaign sees three major differences with Clinton's 2016 campaign, according to a source familiar with its thinking. The first is that Trump is president. Unlike four years ago, when many young people were complacent because they assumed he'd lose. The second is that Biden's 2020 platform is more progressive than Clinton's was in 2016. And the third is that Biden and Sanders like each other personally which will make it easier to coalesce. Okay, so there's quite a bit that I want to say about that. Um, the first that I want to point out is that um, not only is this a problem, but I see no hope of this problem improving for Joe Biden because the recommendations that we've seen here from polling experts, at least, you know, Andrew Bauman was one of them that was quoted in this article. The things that he recommends aren't going to suffice. So he says, look, if Joe Biden were to adopt some of Sanders policy proposals like anti-corruption measures really go, you know, um, full force focus on climate change, or if he had a meeting with Sunrise, maybe that could help. Um, let me just say firsthand, as a millennial, that's not going to help. And the three differences that his campaign cites, like he admits that this is an issue, but the reason why he thinks that he's in a better position than Clinton is because, well, there's a number of factors here. Trump is president now, so that might galvanize the Democratic Party electorate, including young people, to come out and vote for him. Except there's an issue with that line of logic. Now that Donald Trump is the incumbent, there's no fears about what he could be. We know what he could be. We've dealt with him for four years. So that effect to galvanize voters, I think, has diminished since 2016. Because in 2016, we didn't know what to expect with Donald Trump. Would we look like fascist Germany? Or would we see just another George W. Bush-esque Republican, neoconservative, um, xenophobe who you know, is fear-mongering about immigrants and is dog-whistling left and right, what is it going to look like? Now we know what that's going to look like. And the problem is that 
young people know that Joe Biden isn't going to improve their lives. The same conditions that led to Donald Trump's electoral success will remain present after four years of Joe Biden. So I don't actually think that Donald Trump is going to be as good of a mobilizer as they're thinking. I mean, don't bank on this. Sure, it's going to encourage some people to come out, but it's not going to be everything. Now, the second thing they say is that Joe Biden's platform is actually more progressive than Hillary Clinton's. Now, that's technically true, at least when it comes to healthcare, because Joe Biden is openly supporting a public option. Hillary Clinton wouldn't even admit to supporting a public option or agree to support a public option more specifically. So he's to the left of her marginally. But the problem is that like Hillary Clinton, voters by and large don't know what his platform is because he doesn't talk about policy. It's always orange man bad, Republicans bad, and voters want to come out and will only come out to vote for something, not vote against someone. And Democrats just haven't realized that that's what motivates people. It's not, you know, voting against this evil person. It doesn't really matter. Like, you have to give them something. Uh, something that they know will change their lives. A policy that, you know, you have been fighting for for decades. And Joe Biden just has none of that. Everything he's fought for has been destructive. The crime bill. Um, you know, Wall Street relief. Like, he is the quintessential neoliberal corporate Democrat. So, you're not going to convince people because everyone knows that you're a fraud. So, you know, when it comes to the public option, even though he's to the left of Hillary Clinton on that, he supported a public option when he ran with Obama and they didn't even propose it. So the question is, why are we supposed to believe that you've changed your mind when the health insurance industry has been betting on you to be successful and to save them from Medicare for all. Like you're in their tank. They're raising money for you. They're donating to you. So why should we believe that you'd even go so far as to even give us a public option? We don't. And that's a problem. Now, the last thing that they say is that um, Biden and Sanders like each other personally. Yeah, I couldn't care less. I think this is a non-factor. Bernie Sanders can say how much Joe Biden is his friend over and over and over again, and it doesn't make me like Joe Biden more. It actually makes me like Bernie Sanders less. Literally. That doesn't matter. Voters don't care about friendships in Washington, D.C. Couldn't care less. But that's not to say that there isn't something that Joe Biden can do. An extreme measure he would never consider, but something that would, theoretically, help him win over young voters. And he's not going to like this, but if you really want to win, you can't win without young voters. And Kyle Kalinske tweeted this out. The only way Joe Biden can earn my vote in the general election is to pick Bernie Sanders or Nina Turner for vice president. Sign the petition for that here if you agree with me. Now, I'll link you to his petition. Look, I'll just say first off, Joe Biden is not going to agree to this. I don't think that Kyle Kalinske think he's going to agree thinks he's going to agree to this, he's most likely going to pick some corporate clown um, like Stacey Abrams, friend of Mike Bloomberg. So he's not going to listen. Uh, but if, in a hypothetical situation, he chose Bernie Sanders as VP, to me, that wouldn't necessarily matter as much because he's still president and Bernie wouldn't really... I mean, maybe he'd influence him to a degree, but it doesn't matter. But if he picks Nina Turner, for me, I would vote for Joe Biden in that very statistically unlikely circumstance. Why? Because, look, here's the thing. He can say that he supports some of Sanders' policy proposals, but that doesn't matter. Like, I don't even think it's necessary for him to say, I, you know, will fight for this policy or that policy that Sanders supports, it doesn't matter because we don't believe you. Like all these financial contributions you are taking from every special interest, the military industrial complex, health insurers, big pharma, it doesn't matter. So we don't believe you. So any policy concession that he makes will not be enough. However, if he were to choose Nina Turner as VP, that would give at least me a reason to vote for him. And I don't speak for everyone. I'm sure people still wouldn't come out and support him. But the reason why I could justify voting for Joe Biden in that instance is because that gives us a chance at a progressive president in the future. If you pick Nina Turner, that sets her up for a presidential run in 2024, 2028. And that's good. Because currently, 
Progressives are so down and demoralized because there's no successor to Bernie Sanders. Who's next? I can't think of anyone. Anyone that wants to run or is eligible to run. AOC probably won't run. She's not going to want to do that you know, for decades. So who's going to carry the torch? We know that you know this movement, it can exist without Bernie Sanders. But leadership is really, I think, one of those things that makes movements, it gives them more staying power. Like Occupy, I feel, would have lasted longer had it had real leadership, but it, you know, it didn't organize in that way. They didn't want leadership and they prided themselves on that. But I think that you do need a leader to kind of help, you know, mobilize people and galvanize certain blocks of the electorate. And so if we're able to look to Nina Turner, who I think would try to influence Joe Biden and wouldn't sell out. I think that that is one way that he could win over young people. One of the only ways. Now, I will say this. He may just be unable to win over young people. That's a possibility. It's probably the most likely scenario because they just don't believe him. So young people, they have to put up with voter suppression, voter ID laws. They're not going to pay the cost to vote if they don't feel as if there's going to be a high enough reward. So you've got to you've got to make sure that they feel as if it's worth it to vote for you. And Nina Turner as VP, if she would even want to do this because he's a horrible person, that would be the only situation that I could honestly see people getting out to vote. Now, I do think that more voters would respond if Bernie Sanders was VP, but if you're giving me the choice, I would pick Nina Turner because Bernie's not going to want to run for president after Joe Biden. I don't think he's going to want to run for president again. And we need someone in the executive office who's a leader. Nina Turner is young. She is the most trusted among progressives. Nobody else can really carry the torch. Now, I'm going to say that I think that she should run for president in 2024, 2028, regardless if she's VP, because media propped up a mayor from, you know, um, South Bend, Indiana, and told us that he was qualified. So you can't say that someone like Nina Turner, who is a state senator, isn't qualified, because I do think that she is qualified. Um, but would this certainly help with, you know, the media at least, and trying to take her more seriously, or at least not downplaying her enough? Sure. So if you pick Nina Turner as VP, that'd give me something to vote for. Will he do this? No. I'm not going to say there's a 0% chance, but I'm going to say the chance of him picking Nina Turner is 0.001%. He's going to pick some type of corporate clown like Amy Klobuchar. But if he was serious about winning over young voters, this is something he should consider. But I don't think he's serious about winning over young voters. I think he just doesn't care. Because he stated before, he has no empathy for us. He's told us to fuck off. He'd veto Medicare for all. So I think that, you know, he's just going to try to win without us. It's possible, but is it um, going to be a lot harder for him? Yeah, it's going to be a lot harder for him. Beta male, not a beta male.